KT Chairman Isak Che has offered his resignation. He may have been responsible for as much as $94 million in losses for his company. Korea's trade surplus in August surpassed that of Japan for the first time. Yearly trade surplus is also expected to outperform Japan. The small African Republic of Rwanda has turned a corner in history, benchmarking Korea's spectacular economic growth model. Hello and welcome to News Today on KBS World. It's Monday, November 4th. I'm Luke Clary. Facing allegations of causing $94 million in financial losses for his firm, KT Chairman Lee Suk Jae has offered his resignation. Prosecutors say they will continue their investigation regardless. KT Chairman Lee Suk Jae offered to resign on Sunday, a day after he came back from a business trip to Africa. He said in an email to KT employees that he could no longer watch staff members suffer. He went on to say that he made the decision to resign with the heart of the true mother in the Bible who objected to King Solomon's order and let the false woman take her baby rather than see it get harmed. He said that he will do his job until a new CEO is chosen and will reveal his salary if it helps dispel suspicions against him. The KT head apparently decided to resign because the prosecutorial investigation was becoming a large burden on him and his company. Prosecutors raided the offices of eight KT executives close to E on October 22nd and the 31st. E is accused of selling 30 company buildings, 81 million U.S. dollars lower than their appraised values, to a certain fund company. A civic organization reported E to the prosecution on charges that he had bought his relatives' businesses and caused financial losses of 18.8 million U.S. dollars to KT. Some people have raised suspicions that he created secret funds. But prosecutors say their investigation will focus on his alleged breach of trust, as reported by the civic organization. Prosecutors have made it clear that they will continue their probe against E. They will decide on when to summon him as soon as they complete the analysis of materials seized during the raids. President Park Geun-hye is in France, where she says she wants to boost cultural cooperation and exchange. French fans of Korean culture throw a party dedicated to Korean TV shows. They dance to K-pop music and sing Korean songs from the Korean TV show soundtracks. President Park Geun-hye reciprocates in French. <laughs> While in France, Park said she wants to expand cultural exchanges between the two countries. In her meeting with ethnic Koreans, the president stressed economic and cultural cooperation. She said that the convergence of content, technologies and culture will contribute greatly to the development of the two nations. Park later met with UNESCO Secretary General Irina Bokova and told her that UNESCO is an important partner in promoting policies aimed at enhancing the cultural status of countries around the world. August this year saw an important economic milestone. Korea's trade surplus surpassed that of Japan for the first time. The yearly trade surplus is also expected to outperform Japan. As of August this year, Korea's current account surplus exceeded 42 billion U.S. dollars, beating Japan by 700 million. It's the first such feat since 1980 when the government began to gather statistics. Korea's trade balance exceeded expectations early on in the first quarter of the year, while Japan started the year in the red and its trade surplus dwindled considerably in the second quarter. Observers say Korea's trade surplus in 2013 will likely surpass Japan by nearly $3 billion. Japan's trade surplus plunged because its imports of thermal power fuel surged 40 percent as a result of the nuclear crisis in Fukushima. Its current account balance will likely suffer a blow in the second half of the year as well because of the soaring demand for heating during the winter. To make things worse, many Japanese electric and electronic companies are losing ground, including Sony and Panasonic. Moody's even recently warned that Sony's credit rating could be degraded to the speculative level. Japan's 
특히 스마트폰 수입이 최근에 많이 확대되어 오고 Last month, Korea's exports exceeded 50 billion dollars for the first time, whereas Japan's trade balance will likely deteriorate further during the remainder of the year. But the overall competitiveness of Korean companies, except for the top four corporations, remains weak, and their profits for every 1,001 of sales have declined 10% compared to 2008 during the global financial crisis. The other factors include the lack of driving engines that can support the economy after the smartphone and auto industry booms and the Korean currency appreciation. The small African Republic of Rwanda was the setting of a brutal, genocidal war. But the country has turned a corner in history, benchmarking Korea's spectacular economic growth model. Some 800,000 people were killed in the 1994 genocide in Rwanda. Now no vestiges of the tragedy are found in the country. Rice farming is in full swing in a rural area near the capital city of Kigali. Rwandan people have adopted Korea's farming technologies and are raising two crops a year. Their income has jumped more than tenfold. Easily they can find food and they can get money after harvesting. Rwandan people are participating in more joint projects like the operation of chicken farms. Korea runs vocational training programs on car maintenance, electrical engineering, and design for young Rwandan people. Korea will introduce its advanced information technology to the African country. Africa, the internet is not the same. The internet is not the same. The internet is not the same. The small African country is now working hard to overcome poverty and wounds from the tribal war. With Korea as its role model, it's able to make its dream of a new future a reality. Concerns over mobile phone wiretapping continue to rise with revelations that even the heads of state can fall victim to spying. New security technologies can help ensure privacy. A man begins to talk on a cell phone. We asked an expert to check if his conversation can be tapped. Ah, 죄송해요. 저 서울 중 중구 순화동입니다. Ah, 죄송해요. 저 서울 중 중구 순화동입니다. His voice can clearly be heard with the help of a wiretapping program downloaded online. 전략기를 시작하도록 하겠습니다. You don't even have to press the call button to spy in on a company's meeting by remotely implanting a malicious code in a smartphone. Anyone can hear the content of someone else's conversation. 악성 코드만 깔리면은 아주 초보자들도 굉장히 쉽게 데이터를 빼갈 수도 있고요. 이상한 문자가 들어오면은 그거를 URL을 클릭하지 않아야 되는데. As concerns over tapped mobile phones are rising, technologies designed to protect the user's privacy are becoming popular. This small chip inserted into the phones of people who call each other often encrypts their voices before transmitting them and prevents wiretapping. Most of those who use such chips are politicians, businessmen, and researchers. Sources say that all executives of the Samsung Group will soon have the chips inserted into their phones. Now that it's no longer a secret that mobile phones can be easily tapped, security is emerging as a serious issue. Stashed away in a National Museum of Korea storage facility for more than 40 years, a sword has been uncovered that is believed to have been owned by King Gojong, the penultimate Joseon King. King Gojong began wearing Western-style outfits after he converted the Joseon dynasty into the Korean Empire in 1897. King Gojong is seen wearing a sword in every photo taken at the time. The sword was believed to have gone missing. However, a sword looking very similar to King Gojong's sword has been found at the National Museum's storage facility. The sword is 81 centimeters long, and its handle is decorated with gold. Plum Blossoms, which is a symbol of the Joseon dynasty's royal family, was engraved on the sword handle. Since the sword was neglected for such a long time, the sword cannot be removed from its sheath. 칼라를 확인하게 돼서 금과 은의 혼합물로 만들어졌다면, 그건 최고 어인 황제가 아니면 쓸수 없는 물건이기 때문에 일단. 
The National Museum of Korea has kept the sword at its storage facility after it found the sword at an antique shop in 1952. The museum told KBS that it will conduct a study on the sword. With a lack of experts, many of the 900,000 historical relics are just sitting in the museum's storage facility. So for now, the nation's valuable historical relics are just rusting away and collecting dust. The nationwide college scholastic aptitude test is just three days away. Good luck charms are flying off shelves and temples around the country are filled with parents praying their children will succeed. A boulder in Mount Palgong is said to make your wish come true if you pray hard enough. The space in front of the boulder is packed with parents wishing for good luck for their children who are about to take a test that will determine their future. They bow, fervently wishing that their children perform well on the exam. Major temples around the country were teeming with parents praying for their children. Such fervent praying was observed regardless of which faith a family belongs to. Families with exam takers came to this church to pray even though it wasn't a Sunday. Naturally wanting the best for their children, parents buy everything from good luck rice cakes to nutritious snacks for test day. Parents seem to be more anxious than their children in the days leading to the National College entrance exam. Rare flora and fauna have descended upon Korea's Upo wetland for fall, retaining the awe-inspiring, pristine beauty of ancient times. Fall has definitely arrived in Upo wetland, Changnyeong County. The Eurasian Spoonbills, natural monument number 205, have come to the wetland to spend the winter. They are busy tidying up their feathers. A flock of endangered bean geese have arrived a month ahead of schedule and enjoys the warmth of the sun. Spot-billed ducks swim across the serene water full of vitality. Some 6,000 winter migratory birds have come to Korea's largest prehistoric wetland that measures 3.4 million square meters to make their winter home. The birds fly freely across the sparkling autumn sky. Silver grass and reeds along the embankment sway in the wind. Upo wetland still retains its ecosystem from 140 million years ago and is the perfect place to enjoy nature's seasonal wonders. Why do clothing sizes always seem to change from brand to brand? Well, we bring you this little-known secret in the industry. You've probably had this experience. Clothes that are supposed to be the same size vary from brand to brand. Homemaker Beiji Sun struggles with this whenever she buys clothes. What size do you buy? 제가 안 맞더라고 옷을 살 때마다. 그러니까 기본 사람들이 다뭐 스몰, 미디움, 뭐 엑스라지스 찾잖아요. 근데. She doesn't get out often because she has a child at home. So she enjoys online shopping. The problem is that the size 55 items she purchased don't all fit the same. This piece she recently bought is too short to wear. KBS conducted an experiment to determine inconsistencies from different manufacturers. A 180 centimeter tall man with an average build tried on dress shirts from three different brands. The one in the middle is long enough to tuck in. The others barely cover his stomach. We measured the shirts. 
standard circumference of the chest is 100, but the measurements differ. Even more baffling is the gap between the left side measuring 100 and the right side 105. Then he tried on shirts of two different sizes. At a glance, the fit is the same. We visited a garment factory to figure out why there's so much inconsistency in sizes. The sewing machine busily whisks away. They say the uneven sizes are a result of their work practice. They make clothes based on individual orders, not by the standardized size plan. At this design studio in Seoul, preparations are well underway for a showcase next year. Sales differ widely depending on design and style preferences. Apparel brands determine their own sizes according to the fashion trends of the time. Even identically sized clothes look different according with the materials and designs used. Design is very sensitive and the trend is different. Garment sizes are always in flux, swayed by trends in design. Consumer complaints are likely to continue and for the time being, your best bet is to try things on before you buy. Now we'll take a look at the markets, followed by the world weather. And that's it for this edition of News Today. We'll see you tomorrow at the same time. Have a great day.